Thank you, David. Um, actually, it's a whole team of people. Uh, uh, so the little thing I wanted to talk to you about related to perfection is electricity is probably one of the least perfect things in the world. Um, we used to say around the company, our competitors, if you wanted to make the last thing in the world go wireless, are wires and disposable batteries. So both those things suck, they really do. And they're really pretty imperfect. And I ask any of you, the next time you go outside and you're walking around, it pr pretty much doesn't matter where it is, you're gonna see, and it's, we're immune to it at some level because we love electricity so much that there's literally millions of miles of electric wire strung everywhere in the most god-awful places, telephone poles hanging all over stuff. We love it so much. We couldn't live without it, by the way. So for something that's so fundamentally imperfect, you know, if the lights went out right now, the conference is kind of over, you know, <laughs> if you think about it. But what I'd like to talk to you about today is whytricity. It's a combination of two words, wireless and electricity, and was actually uh, discovered by a professor at MIT who in the most uh, sort of, the way a lot of breakthroughs happen, kept getting woken up by his wife's cell phone as it ran out of battery power every night. And as he lay there with insomnia, he's thinking to himself, you know, there's all this electricity running around in the walls. Why couldn't some go into the phone? And the guy figured it out, which is amazing. So uh, anyway, uh, we're based just outside of Boston, Watertown, Massachusetts, um, developing this technology that those three things that you see up there are something that we want to reinforce throughout this talk today. It's safe. Lightning is electricity that's wireless, right? It's not safe. <laughs> the radio signals in your car, you know, they're not very efficient because it's just a tiny little amount of energy that gets there compared to the transmitter that's transmitting the radio signal. And then um, the one that I'm going to touch on quite a bit is it actually works over distance. And the closest technology to that is something that was actually discovered back in 1831 by Michael Faraday, who's considered the father of electromagnetic induction. So, uh, many years later, Nikola Tesla, actually, uh, who is a Croatian uh, by birth, and the professor at MIT who discovered this is also a Croatian. Um, but he wanted to transfer electricity around the world. What you're going to see today is a little bit more modest, but I think equally mind-blowing. So um, just as a few proof points for safety, this is actually being used today in implanted medical devices. Uh, some of these won't be on the market for a few years because the governments do need to approve them. But you'll, um, I'll be able to demonstrate some of that safety to you. Uh, how efficient it works. In today's green world, that becomes more and more important to us. And then finally, doing it over distance is the thing I'll come back to again in a moment. So there really are the closest technology to what whytricity is, was this technology called magnetic induction discovered by Michael Faraday in 1831. It's the basis of every one of those little wall transformers you have. If you actually looked inside, what you'd see is two coils of wire placed very close to each other. One's plugged into the wall, one's plugged into your phone. And it transforms the voltage, but it actually also goes wirelessly. It induces, when the, mag when the wall current goes onto the first coil, it creates a magnetic field that oscillates, and the other one picks it up. But anyone who's ever taken an electrical engineering course or basic physics course in either high school or college learns very quickly you can't separate those coils in a transformer, they won't work anymore. Some of you may have that uh, toothbrush, electric toothbrush in your, uh, that you can drop into a base and it charges wirelessly. Actually, if you look at the bottom, there are no contacts on the bottom. That works by magnetic induction. And some of you may have seen those cell phone uh, pads that you can get now, but they have to touch. You move it a millimeter off the thing, it doesn't work anymore. So this is unlike uh, magnetic induction in four ways and run through each one of them. The first is that, remarkably, and this is what the professor at MIT discovered, you can change its distance and orientation um, over rather remarkable distances. By the way, distance is defined by size, the size of the objects, basically. It's not by the power level, the amount of power. It's basically just, it's a size and distance phenomenon. 
The second, this one actually becomes quite remarkable as you think about how we might use this in our lives. One source of electricity can power many things simultaneously as long as they sit in this magnetic field that I'll discuss in a moment. Also, they can be very different sizes, so you might not want to make your cell phone much bigger, for example, than it is already so that you could power, power it or charge it wirelessly, but you actually uh, might be able to make something else bigger, t the table, the area that you want it to come from. And then finally, this is one of the areas where most people will ask how far can you go when you see the technology, like what's the distance th this energy can actually travel. And it turns out that it is a size and distance phenomenon, so make the source where the electricity comes from bigger or make the device where it goes to bigger. Maybe you can do neither of those things. And it turns out you can create passive objects, which we call repeaters, which allow energy to go through them, and you can go even over further distances as well. Um, I want to go back to the safety again on this because this is an oscillating magnetic field. So what we're doing is taking this object, think of it as a coil. Those of you that are technical, it's a coil with a capacitor actually attached to it. And we oscillate it at a high frequency. If you can train another object, which is on the right at, at the bottom there, to recognize that, and we call that a resonator, a resonant object, then you can actually get energy to couple between them magnetically, not electrically. And that's super important going back to my analogy about safety and lightning and things like that as well. So we call this technology, we call it Ytricity, but it's highly resonant wireless power transfer. And you might say, well, I don't understand that. But actually, all of you do. You understand it in different physical domains. When you were a child and you sat on a swing and you made that swing go that first time, that magical sensation you got as you imparted mechanical resonance, that's what it was. You moved your feet just right, that swing went. You went too fast or too slow, nothing happened. That's mechanical resonance. Ella Fitzgerald, Liber Memorex, sings, the glass breaks. That was acoustic resonance. What this professor figured out was what if we used a magnetic field, a very light magnetic field, but only so that the source recognized it and the device recognized it, you could create this phenomenon. And what you're looking at is sort of a picture, if you could see the magnetic field of something that's created, and if, it, if it's in that magnetic field, you can transfer energy. So start thinking about the things. Now, all of us are consumers, so consumer electronics, phones, televisions, you know, battery-powered devices, those are the things we think about first. But actually, um, whether it's a laptop that's running out of power, but other things, lighting. Imagine that you can create wireless light fixtures, no cords. Um, Defense applications actually have a very big part in the research that's used to create things along the commercial roadmap. Whether it's underwater, because this technology works underwater, it, it doesn't care where it is. Um, so it's been proven already in a lot of defense applications for charging of bomb sniffing robots, for example, so soldiers don't have to get out of the um, protected Humvee to change a rechargeable battery. Um, and the um, medical area is quite an interesting one where you can implant a medical device in a person and instead of having a cord come out of their body, which will ultimately kill them from an infection, you can actually seal them off so that you can sleep in bed, wirelessly charge at night while you're moving around, sitting on the couch. Um, and all of this technology is beginning to be rolled out to the companies that are making it go wireless, supplied with technology uh, from this group, uh, Ytricity. And then finally, actually this is one of the cooler ones. Um, it's being tested now by uh, one of the biggest car companies or the biggest car company in the world. You'll drive your car in the garage, what, uh, electric car, and it will charge wirelessly. You just walk away from the car. Ultimately, that could be put in the roadways as well. So what I'd like to do now is show you how some of this technology works. So it's a little bit of a science lesson here today. Um, Let's start with the first concept, which is here's a rechargeable battery and a resonator. So what I'm doing, I just turned it on, and it's creating a magnetic field all around this. And if you remember, different sizes are also, see that one's much smaller if you can see inside of it, but check that out. It works next to it, it works at a right angle. 
Actually, if you wanted to put it in furniture, for example, it works right through that. Those of you that ask about the safety, it works through me. <laughs> and I wanted to give you some numbers, because usually people ask what the numbers are. Doing that is 100 times safer than making a cell phone call. It's a million times safer than getting in an MRI machine. And if neither one of those convince you, it's actually about the same as living on the Earth. So we like to say at Whitricity, if you're OK living on the Earth, you ought to be OK with this. If you remember also multiple objects, and I'm hoping you can see that from here, imagine that you have multiple things that you run from the same source. So imagine some technology like that would allow you to do that. And then remember the how far will it go? So as I'm lifting this off the table, you'll see I'm about 10 inches, and it just went out. If I place a passive object, a repeater, in between, now look how far I can go. So I'm probably almost two feet away from the source of electricity. And this is a passive object, a repeater, that the energy just hops through. So you could put this into clothing, walls, ceilings, floors, completely passively. I mean, so that's how the technology works. How might you use it? Let's look at television sets. So here's a TV. The resonator's right there. to fire up the remote control here. There we go. So there's a 250-watt television set. It's being powered from here. If you walked around it, you'd see there's absolutely nothing anywhere nearby it. I assume he's not referring to me. So television, imagine. Imagine you could put that coil or that resonator instead of the base, you could put it around your television set and put it on the wall. So let's go from there down here. And remember the electric car? So we really, really wanted to bring an electric car and put it on stage, but it would not fit through that thing, the uh, honeycomb. But we did try. But we brought part of the car. So. Imagine that this is a mat on the floor of your garage. It's plugged in. This is your car. If you were to, able to look under, on top here, you would see a coil. It's about 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. Pretty small, actually. And because watching a battery charge is kind of like watching grass grow, um, what we did is put two lights there. Those are 500-watt light bulbs. That's 1,000 watts. Um, what I'm going to do is put energy in now. And by the way, anybody that's an engineer, watts going in, remember 1,000 watts, this is volts and that's amps. You multiply those two numbers together, you get watts. That's the input power to the pad on the floor of your garage. And you'll see what happens is, as I start to put that in, it'll recognize that it's there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it as far as I can without plunging us all into darkness by blowing the circuit breaker. So 310, 2.99, 300, that's about 930 watts. That looks like 930 watts. And why is that? Because it's 98.5% efficient. There's a 1.5% loss. When the car companies saw this, they said, this may make electric vehicles either by, um, you know, much more usable from a consumer's standpoint or imagine being able to put it in the roadways where you just literally hop between coils without batteries in your car any longer. This will be on the market within two years in electric cars. And um, <laughs> we think it could fundamentally change the way that people think of electric vehicles. Now, usually people ask how far it can go. So I wanted you to think, we, we set this up in the air here to show you what a room in the future might look like. So you remember those repeaters? Suppose we put it into the carpeting. So there's four, four pieces of carpet there. Here's the can, which is the source of the electricity. So the coil or the resonator is only that big. There's one in the floor lamp. There's one in the cell phone up here. There's one in this uh, desk lamp. And then there's one underneath the table. And if I plug the can in, check this out.
The cell phone just started charging, the lamps on, the floor lamps on, all powered from this little guy right over here. So think of the distances you can go. Think if you could just place lamps wherever you want them, anywhere. So let's go back to sort of the world that we live in, battery charging. It's pushing four o'clock. Most of your cell phones are probably dead about now. <laughs> wanted to, uh, to have a couple things I wanted to show you. Actually, one of them actually you guys would appreciate being the shoe capital of the world. Wearable electronics, kind of a hot topic these days. I went and got, bought these shoes. They have these little chips in them. By the way, I've never worn the shoes because I think about the second time I wore the shoes, I would not want to be doing this, pulling the liner out. You know. Um, but what we did is put Witricity in the chip so you don't have to pull the chip out and stick it in your computer to charge it. And let's just use the television set if we can. You know, check this out. See the shoes are lit up? And that is the equivalent of the battery charging inside the shoe box. So most people throw their shoe box out when they get the shoes. Imagine that you could have wearable electronics that just literally are charged from wherever it happens to be. So back to your cell phone. Imagine you make it so thin it just fits into your phone. So it's built, it, Wytricity is built into the phone, and the computer companies are beginning to want to put it in the computer. So fire up the computer, that familiar sound, and imagine that you're just sitting at your desk and you just place the phone up next to your, right, your phone goes right next to your computer. So the phone is actually being charged from the computer. I don't know about you, but I think I'd buy this in a heartbeat. It's a reason to buy a new computer. And it's something that everybody understands. So I want to talk to you about one other thing before closing, and that's to go back to the thing I talked about, wires not being the most perfect thing. Pick on AA batteries for a moment. Our power grid in the United States supplies power at 10 cents per kilowatt hour. You know what a battery costs per kilowatt hour? $300. Do the math. It's 3,000 times better to use the grid in the United States than it is to use a disposable battery, and we're doing this 40 billion times a year, and we know where these go when you're done with them. So here is the world's first wirelessly rechargeable AA battery. Because you would not. And imagine if you're a parent with kids in video games and you're, you know, all these things are getting sort of beat up. Imagine you had a bowl like this. You just plugged it into your game deck. And check this out, if you can see it. The battery's actually charging while it's sitting in the bowl. And if I put it in the game controller, it's still charging. So you'd never have to take the battery out again, which is one of the objections people have of wireless um, and using rechargeable batteries. So I think this one could really fundamentally change the world. And we've often said, if the battery companies don't do this with us, we're just going to do it ourselves. So um, I'll quickly end with my last slide, which is, comes as Arthur C. Clarke's third law, if you remember, the guy who did 2001. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Thank you very much.